Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jeff, the IT guy. Thank you for coming back to another video. Listen, we're here in the IT lab or whatever, I don't know. We're up here in my office. And today we're gonna be looking at the Thermaltake UX100. This is um, a low profile RGB cooler. Works for both AMD and Intel. Supports up to 65 watts. Um, but we're gonna use it on a 95 watt piece because why not, you know? Hey, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, am I right? So if you can cool a 1600X, you can cool a, you know, other 65 watt part. Um, like I said, it's RGB, it works with ASUS Aura Sync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0, and MSI Mystic Lite. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the box and show you what it looks like. It's, um, like I said, it's low profile. It's a little bit bigger than what I thought it would be. Uh, I haven't seen a cooler like this in a while, let me tell you. So here's what it looks like. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit low profile. It's one of the, it reminds me of something, they used to make a cooler like this back in uh, the early 2000s. I can't think of the name of it. It's really popular though, that a lot of people would use on their AMD and Intel systems. Um, I wish I knew the name of it, but I don't. So, oh well. Um, you know, it's got a nine blade fan. It's got RGB all around here. It is black. Uh, it comes with pre-installed the stuff for AMD and it just clips onto the clips that come onto the motherboard already, the retention clips. So you actually don't have to remove those, which is kind of nice. It should make installation, installation a little bit easier. Um, and it comes with the hardware to mount it to Intel. Uh, it does come with thermal paste in the box. I'm sure it is junk, but always, like always here on the channel, we use Noctua uh, NTH1 for these tests. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use Noctua NTH1 on our CPU. And we're gonna run 15 minutes of OCCT, large data set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to install it. Uh, we'll see if it's, an, if it's easy to do, if it's hard and then we are going to run the test. We're gonna come back and we're gonna see how it does with the 1600A. We're on a test board. This is a DS35 or a DS3H um, by Gigabyte, a B450 board. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna see how easy it is to install. We'll look at it here. You can see you've got your uh, three pin fan header and then you've got your RGB cables. And so um, it's got a two prong here and it tells you where to put it out on your board. This board does not have RGB, um, but for our purposes, we just wanna see. So you got these two clips right here. You need your retention bracket right here. And all you do is you just slide it on. Okay. Get the clip. It does require quite a bit of force. I will say that that is um, unusual that it requires so much force. To be honest, not a fan of that. Um, but you just push down on each side here. Okay, just push down and then Push down with this side as well. It's got a little clip on it here. Um, you just maneuver it. There you go. That's all you gotta do. There is quite a bit of force behind it to get it seated on there. Um, but that's what it looks like when it's on. Let's look and see here at the RAM. Uh, it doesn't look like it will impact your RAM. At least I hope not. Uh, let's see. Looking at it right through here doesn't look like it's going to interfere with that first RAM slot, so that's good. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this on the test bench and go ahead and test it and see how well it does. All right, and we are back. Listen, just got through, uh, shows you how to install it, um, and I got through testing it, so let's talk about the test system real quick. It's a 1600X, that's a six core, 12 thread, first gen Ryzen, 95 watt TDP part on an ASUS Strix, uh, 450, B450 board, um, 16 gigs of RAM with an RX 480. 
Uh, this is my hot box, as I'm calling it. So um, just trying to pump as much heat as I can so that I can test coolers, and we're also gonna use it to test cases. So I want to see how well uh, it does with parts that are you know, harder than, than normal. Um, so let's talk about the CPU cooler. I don't really like the mounting mechanism. It, it, it is easy, relatively easy to install. However, it, uh, you know, it, it, it's a little bit scary to install as well. You have to put a lot of force to get that second latch actually over the retention bracket. And it feels like you're really gonna hurt something. I mean, you're pushing, you have to push really hard. Um, I don't really care for that. It's, it's not a very good mounting mechanism in, in my opinion. The Intel one looks a lot easier. You actually just screw it on. So you can actually just screw it on with the Intel. With this one though, you got, I mean, you got to crank down on it. You've seen it in the video. Uh, it's not very cool at all. Uh, performance wise, um, it actually, it did, it did better than what I thought it would. And so this, this part is only rated for 65 watts. Okay, so it, it's pretty low rated um, as far as wattage goes. So it's going to be like your, your Ryzen uh, 3200Gs, 3400Gs, your 3100, your 3300X, um, your Intel parts like the i3s and the i5s that are not high up on the SKU list, not the ones with a K or anything. So it's for those. Um, it's, it's really what it's for. It's not meant for you know, a 95 watt part like the 3600 is, the 3600X. Um, so, bear that in mind. So whenever I tested this running OCCT, uh, the max temperature was 74.5 uh, from the readout in OCT. That's pretty high. You know, that's, that's not, it's not low by any means. Um, so it is, it is pretty high up there. And what that meant was it also meant that the clocks on the 1600 were going like this. And so they would go down and up, down and up, down and up. It wasn't level. There wasn't major dips, but you could definitely see. And then the longer the test went on, um, you know, the, the, the lower the, the actual clocks got. So to begin with, they were around like 34.5 or 3.45 gigahertz. Whenever the test finished, they were around 3.3 gigahertz. Um, all core, so you know it, it doesn't do so well with that, but but it, it actually did better perform. I mean, like I said, the the 1600X has a 30 watt higher TDP than what this thing's even rated for. And to compare it against something, the Wraith RGB that comes with like a 3800, a 3700X, 3900X. Um, the RGB AMD stock cooler that comes with those SKUs, uh, it actually did 55 degrees. And so running OCCT on it uh, for the same amount of time and the part actually overclocked as well as stock was only 55 degrees. So there's about a 20 degree difference there. So that just shows, goes to show you how good of a cooler the Wraith RGB is. Um, the thermal take here, it does have RGB. You can see it behind me. Um, it does work with MSI and everything. Uh, you just, there's, a little, there's two uh, pins on the motherboard that you plug it into. It's, the instructions are in this box. This retails for about $19.99. So it's not bad, it's not a bad price. What this is to me is for is this is for someone who has the crappy uh, Intel stock cooler because um, it sucks. It's not good at all. So it's someone who has that and wants to upgrade or it's someone who has um, the, you know, the Wraith Stealth or whatever they call it uh, for like a 3200, 3400 G, those parts. Uh, it's for someone who has those and they want something that's just a little bit better that's still low profile um, but something that looks nicer, it's all black, and it has RGB. That's who it's for. And so for $19.99, I believe what this was, on Amazon, it'll be linked in the description, as well as the Noctua stuff, um, it's, it's not bad. It's not a bad part for $19.99.
It really isn't. I mean, to get a little bit of RGB in your life, to get a little bit of better temperatures, to not have the crappy stock Intel CPU cooler, you can't really go wrong for, for $20, you know. Um, you're not really begging for much at that point with, with $20. And so, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. It means a lot to me. We're really close to 1,000 subscribers. I would like to hit that in 2020. That is my goal, um, to be able to hit 1,000 subscribers within one year of actually actively posting here on the channel. So, I can't do that without your help, and I really appreciate it. It also helps me to bring you all more content as well. Um, so go ahead and subscribe for that. Listen, we've got more CPU cooler reviews coming. We've got some Arctics. We've got some deep cools. Um, we're going to look at, you know, some NZXT AIOs. There's all sorts of coolers that we can look at. We're going to look at some really cool cases. There's just a lot of stuff that we're going to look at here on the channel. Also going to look at a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X. Uh, with the PlayStation 5, I am going to show you all how to upgrade the NVMe SSD in it and which ones you need to take advantage of that high bandwidth that is required to run PS5 games off of it. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that video when the PS5 launches, which is probably might be um, before this actually. So, you know, um, so yeah, so have a great evening or day or whatever it is. I don't know why I'm saying evening. Listen, I hope you all are staying safe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you've used it, uh, if you're going to use it, whatever, what cases you like, all sorts of stuff. And I love replying to all of y'all. Y'all have a fantastic day.